Hi everyone, welcome here to my corner of the world. Strange, weird weekend we had, at least for me. I entered the weekend with feelings of apprehension for numerous reasons, both personal and otherwise, and I'm leaving the weekend and entering the week feeling exactly the same. I watched and followed the news in Britain on Saturday and Sunday and I'm glad that the clashes that they were did not culminate into something bigger. I think it is just a shame that so many newspaper and other media outlets classified ordinary British citizens who were trying to exercise their right to pay their respects at the senator as extreme right wing. In my opinion, it is a load of hogwash and gaslighting. Anyway, enough said. That is my opinion and we likely differ on that and that is okay too. That is not what this channel is about. This was King Charles' second year to lead the Remembrance Weekend and service so it was not exactly new to him. But I think it was especially emotional for everybody as he unveiled the statues of his mother and father. And you know, it does not matter whether you are a king or a pauper. Your parents will always be your parents. So I do not blame him one bit for having tears in his eyes. I found Catherine also very emotional on Saturday night and on Sunday. I have seen her emotional during the reef laying ceremony at the Senator before, but this Sunday was a little more. She really had to battle to stop herself from crying. I understand that it is an emotional event. Even just watching it on my laptop, I get a lump in my throat. But I think Catherine looked beautiful as always, but also rather tired. I think it is harder than anticipated for everyone to deal with the loss of the Queen. I think in a way it has only started to hit them the last couple of months. I think it is like in any other family. Once all the formalities are over, once everyone returns to their normal lives and jobs, that is when the loss really hits you. The Queen was indeed a tiny little old lady, but with a huge, huge presence. And I think her family often underestimated that presence because she was so calm and stoic. So it was almost as if she just floated in and out of the company and presence. However, once removed, there was this emptiness, this beacon of hope no one had to turn back to. Having said all of that, I also think it is not easy being married to a royal, any royal, unless of course you yourself had grown up in that life. Catherine and others like Mary of Denmark are doing wonderfully as commoners who married into a royal family, but I honestly think it is difficult, difficult despite all the money, all the staff, and all the other privileges, the routine, the do's and don'ts, the rules and regulations, and the having to smile in public even if you do not feel like it. Also remember that the husbands or wives also grew up with different values and likely got away with shit we likely never have. <laughs> and as much as we love William and are angry at Harry, I think it applies to the both of them. But William is far more intelligent, far more balanced. He is not an addict and have far less mental health issues. And thus he makes better choices and deals with life in a far more balanced manner. But at no time am I going to sit here and think 
that living with William is indeed paradise. No, no, no. He has a temper and he is a huge flirt and likely has other characteristics which makes day-to-day -day life a little tricky around them. I think when things are good, they are very, very good. And when it is bad, it is likely really bad. Over the last few days with the Remembrance Weekend and the King's 75th birthday ahead, so much had been written about the relationships within the family, particularly the relationship between Charles and Harry. So many are describing the King's anger and sadness with regards to Harry and maybe the other grandchildren, for all we know. Although, in my opinion, you can't really miss something you have never known or you never had. But I believe the king is sad and that he misses Harry, and I'll tell you why. I think the king understands Harry, whereas I do not think the king always understands William's more complicated personality and nature. I think the king has more in common with Harry, maybe not intellectually, but that also gave the king the opportunity to teach someone. Whereas I think William's intelligence and intellect is slightly superior to King Charles's and therefore it is difficult for the king to share his vast experience with William. I think William very much wants to do things his way. I've heard from a number of sources, not just mainstream media, that there are indeed some tension on a fairly regular basis between William and his office and the king and his office and I think Charles would have wanted Harry there to back him up. Heck, I think William would have wanted Harry there to back him up, although I think there had always been some jealousy. I also think there was a time when Harry and William actually got along well. Remember the happy trio William, Catherine and Harry? Anyway, there were many instances in public where it was obvious that Charles was closer to Harry, had more empathy with Harry than with William. I think, had Diana lived, William would have been his mother's keeper and Harry his father's. But Diana died and became a fantasy, an icon, and to a large extent, a myth, and Harry spun his own fairy tale and longings into his mother's memory. Now everyone thinks that Harry was the mama's boy, when in reality it is now just an act, and wasn't even remotely the case when Diana was alive. So yes, I do believe that the king is saddened and misses Harry and although I do not 100% believe that Charles has cut Harry off completely, I do believe that Charles is so fed up and so tired of all the BS Harry and Meghan came up with or still come up with on a weekly basis that he has just given up. I mean, why invite them to events when they are just going to hang around looking miserable and likely going to talk about how badly they were treated afterwards? No, I do believe that Charles is still pulling strings behind the scenes for Harry because he knows that Harry has to live and do something and earn money. But I also believe that in a familial context, Charles is putting more and more distance between them. Because I think Charles is tired. He is tired of defending every word he speaks, defending every decision he makes to his youngest son. 
And I do not really blame him, do you? The only thing I do blame Charles for is that he is not instigating the same protective measures when it comes to the monarchy and distance the firm, the institution from Harry as well. In my opinion, Charles could rather cut Harry off from the monarchy and seek some kind of peace and understanding in their personal relationship. As a matter of fact, I think it would be easier to reconcile as father and son if there are no longer titles, money and inheritances in the way. I also think that will be one sure way to rid themselves of Meghan because the Duchess of Sussex has become her brand, her name. It is what she calls herself. And if you take that from her, she will have no use for Harry. None. She will find some millionaire or billionaire faster than you can say, oh shit. And Harry will be kicked to the curb in a blink of an eye. I see that the Prince's Trust and the Prince's Foundation has now been renamed the King's Trust and the King's Foundation. Quite frankly, despite what the media and people said, I never expected King Charles to hand it over to William. William has his own endeavours, such as the Royal Foundation, Earthshot and the Homeless Endeavour. And Harry? Well, Harry is on the other side of the globe. <laughs> I have studied the Prince's Trust and Foundation in depth, and I have not changed my mind and I still have the same criticisms I had before but that is not for this particular video. All I have to say is that I think the king had no choice but rename and reclaim the foundation and trust as there really is no one to pass it on to. I think in the future the trust in particular will become more and more independent and will be run by a board with less and less input from the king. The foundation, however, supports more of the king's interests like architecture, history and art and I think he will remain as engaged as much as he can for as long as he can. But that is, once again, my opinion and only the future will tell. Okay, now I'm not going to talk about Megan today, but I have a bit of tea to spill. <laughs> I'm just waiting for some confirmation or for some more information. For now, let's just say I had at least one of my suspicions confirmed. but. Before I leave, I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet because on Friday I'm going to announce the early Christmas giveaway for subscribers and you're going to be so sorry if you missed it just because you forgot to press that subscribe button. Okay guys, I'm off. Please take good care of your songs until we meet again on the next one. Bye!